Rich Dronder with TMC. Thanks for watching. We're in Boston, Mass. This week, talking with a number of companies in the area. Uh, one of those is Tile Glass, and we're thrilled to have Tim Dolan on the program with us. Uh, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me, Rich. Uh, so, Tim, tell me a little bit about the company. You guys have been on the program uh, four times, five yeah. times, maybe yeah. over the years, and very exciting times. Uh, we just celebrated our ten-year anniversary this year. So we went from the woodshed of Dermot O'Shea's house in Enniscore, the Ireland, 10 years ago, to now 10 years later to having 90 employees, worldwide offices, and being the number one antenna vendor in the M2M space. So it's been a great 10 years. Things have been really, uh, really strong. Congratulations. So why, uh, to what do you attribute that success? Uh, you know something, I really, uh, I attribute the success to both Ronan Quinlan and Dermot O'Shea, who are managing partners. When they got into this 10 years ago, most of the antenna companies were concentrating on cell phones or laptops, right? They are chasing those big volume applications. If you didn't get them, you were hurting. Or if you got them, uh, the next generation around, you didn't get them, revenue goes from here to here. They said, no, we're going to concentrate on the M to M space where we make better antennas that go into the specific verticals like transportation, like medical, like industrial, um, metering, that type of thing. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So um, basically your your focus on this market is why uh, companies out there in the M2M ecosystem should consider working with Tile Glass. Exactly, exactly. And, and we've invested a lot of money uh, in the business. Uh, we're the only antenna vendor to have three world-class design centers and anechoic test chambers. So not only do we make great antennas, but we can take customers' devices, put them in our chambers, test them with our antennas, and we can tell them whether they will pass the criteria to get onto Verizon, um, uh, AT&T, Sprint, or T-Mobile, or anything like that. And so we have an office over in Ireland that covers uh, Europe, the Middle East, and South Africa. We have one in San Diego here that covers North America and South America. And we have one over in Taiwan that covers the Far East, Australia, and India. So is network interoperability the major reason that customers go to you? Is it just one of the reasons? Yeah, I think it's one of the reasons. We have great antennas. There's no question. Our breadth of antennas are absolutely fantastic. But a lot of the reasons they come to us is because the carriers have criteria to get onto their networks. You can't just throw an antenna in and get onto AT&T's network. There's criteria you have to meet. And there's nuances about RF, you know, suppressing board noise, and getting performance that will pass to get onto their networks. So not only do we make great antennas, but we help you only go through one board spin to get to market, maybe in five or six months, versus 12 to 15 months, and you try to do it yourself, and you're spinning these boards four and five times. Very exciting. So uh, the M10 market we see is growing like crazy, mm -hmm. and um, as the, the market continues to grow, are there any... Uh, words of advice to give vendors in the space, new entrants? Uh, 4G, 4G, 4G. <laughs> um, it was amazing because the first interview with you was four years ago, and it was at a 4G show. And at that time, our CTO, Ronan Quinlan, said we really have to come out with a, a very impressive line of LTE antennas, 4G antennas. And he was way ahead of the game then. I mean way ahead of the game because our competition might have one or two LTE antennas. We have the largest... Uh, LTE antenna line in the industry right now. Everywhere from an embedded antenna that goes down onto a circuit board to flexible antennas that go inside of a, a box to uh, antennas that go on top of uh, tractor trailers, uh, subway systems, and things like that. So we really push that product line, the LTE product line, and it's really paying dividends especially here the last uh, three and four years. Uh, you're right. Four years ago, the carriers were telling me that they were thrilled to be selling M10 solutions because they were actually able to generate new revenue on their legacy networks. That's right. So it's interesting. Had you listened to what they were saying, you would be building legacy antennas exclusively because mm -hmm. you know that's, that's the network that they wanted to sell. But it, there are a lot of reasons why um, companies should stick with um, LTE at the last... M to M Evolution event in Las Vegas mm -hmm. that I was at this summer. I actually uh, talked to uh, one of the vendors there that was saying that LTE is becoming important because companies don't want to have to deal with um, networks getting sunsetted. That's right. And so it makes more sense now to design for LTE. At least you know you're going to have a product that's going to be on a network for a long time. That's right. And, and we see that we have very, very big uh, companies coming to us 
saying specifically that. So if you're looking at a large metering company that makes electric meters that have to be out there for 20 years and then doing their next generation design, they've already consulted with AT&T and Verizon and Sprint and they've said, you really, if you want it out there that long, you have to move on to 4G. So a lot of them are going from 2G and almost bypassing the 3G to get to 4G. Yeah. Or the, what they'll right. do is they'll go to 4G and have to fall back to 3G and 2G as well. Mm -hmm. But you're seeing that happen with major, major companies right now. And as that happens and the economists of scale happen and you start shipping in larger volume, well, the pricing comes down and it allows the other industries to get involved with that as well. Sure. So is there anything else uh, the company's considering working with you should know? Um. I didn't hear that question. Is there anything else that we didn't talk about, like um, maybe a news release or some new product? We do. We have two big press re uh, releases this week. Uh, one is we have upgraded our anechoic test chamber in San Diego. It was a $1 million investment. We are going from 2G to 3G uh, to now we're going 2G, 3G to 4G. And it was a $1 million investment for all the equipment, for the calibration, and, and to do that. And we are getting overwhelmed right now with customers that want to come in and do the testing. Great. We also have a new product, and we call it our Genesis product. Typically, with LTE, you need two antennas. And for the tractor-trailer market specifically, typically what happens is you'll put your modem inside the cab, and you'll run the antennas with long cable runs to the top of the roof mm -hmm. and cut a hole in the roof and then ended up getting your antenna uh, solution that way. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of installation time. Um, the performance is not always great because you're making those long cable runs. Mm -hmm. We have this antenna. It's an adhesive mount antenna. We call it the Genesis. It does 2G, 3G, and 4G, and it gets 60% efficiency. And uh, just to tell you, AT&T and Verizon want 35 to 40% efficiency to get on their network. So now tractor-trailer companies, when they put the modems inside, can just take this antenna, put tape on the back of it, and stick it to a window or put it on their dashboard, or put it under their dashboard, and they'll get better performance than they're getting out of the antenna that they're putting on the roof. The installation time is cut in half, and the antenna costs are less as well. So uh, take a look for the Genesis device. Very exciting. Yeah. Well, great. Anything else we should know? I just want to make sure we give you a chance to talk about everything that's new and exciting. No, that's it. Fantastic. Thanks for being on the program. This hey, is thank great. you very much.